All right, guys, went back today with another review of a G-Force Arms semi-auto shotgun, and this one is in the 12-gauge pattern. If you follow the channel, you know I reviewed their kind of standard or basic semi-auto 12-gauge shotgun that's a tubular-fed design. Then they sent me one out to the channel for me to try out, and it was the Bullpup shotgun. And now this is another one they sent to me that is in the AR-style platform. Now, both the Bullpup and the AR-style platform take the MK1919-style 12-gauge magazines. These are becoming almost an industry standard for Turkish semi-auto shotguns in this pattern, as well as the Bullpup pattern, so you're going to be able to find these anywhere. I kind of wanted to lead off with this because a lot of these Turkish shotguns seem to carry a lot of themes and it may be confusing to a lot of people out there. What are the differences? What are the similarities? Now, this is only my second semi-auto 12 gauge uh, in the AR style platform, so I can't talk much about all of the other variants, but we are going to focus on this today and the fact that a lot of those mags and different components are interchangeable. I also want to give a huge shout out to American Pawn and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina for always helping out with the ammo for these videos, as well as G-Force Arms themselves. They sent out a wide variety of ammunition for us to test, see what works, see what doesn't, so you don't have to waste your time buying ammo. You'll probably have a better understanding at the end of this video of what works. I know I certainly do. I really understand what works in this shotgun. The other thing I want to talk about is also American Pawn and Gun carries the G-Force line of shotguns. So if you happen to be in Monroe, North Carolina, tell them 704 Tactical sent you over and they'll hook you up with some deals. Now let's talk about the specs and features and performance down at the range. And the first thing I want to discuss is the price. The MSRP on this guy is kind of hard to pin down, um, but I found these under $500. So we're just going to call this a sub $500 gun. And right off the bat, that is a great value considering all you get. Now, you'll really want to watch this entire review to make sure you understand if this one is right for you because it's not without its issues, it's not without its problems, but it is an awesomely built semi-auto 12 gauge. So let's start talking about that. From the front, what you have is this very interesting barrel cover that connects everything right here. It's a thicker profile than the barrel, and it comes with interchangeable chokes that you can swap out depending on what you're doing. Trap shooting, skeet shooting, hunting, personal defense, so all of those chokes are included in the box. That's a really nice touch. Then it interfaces and transitions into the rail system, which is actually very slick. It's an all aluminum rail system, which is really solid. And the build quality on this thing is spectacular, considering some of the other ones I've seen on gun shop shelves at the same price point. When you pick this up, you feel like you're getting something built a little bit tougher than some of those plastic or cheaper rail systems or upper assemblies on some other 12 gauge shotguns. It's got pick rails on the sides, top and bottom to attach lights, lasers, whatever you want and then this particular design from g-force arms has very smooth sides so you can grab a hold of it this aluminum helps also dissipate the heat so you can shoot it a lot more without worrying about burning your hands it comes with these flip up iron sights now the rear actually started flipping down on me with one high brass shell in particular uh, but every other shell those sights held up fine these are more backup sights in my opinion and if you're shooting bird shot or kind of just standard two and three quarter buckshot, they're gonna work out fine. They didn't walk loose or fall off, but this one did flip down with the three inch high brass shells uh, on one particular load. It's got a nice pick rail at the top right here so you can add optics. We'll be doing that in the future and potentially using this as a test bed for a different variety of optics that we may get out to the channel. Moving along to the rear, it's got the basic controls of an AR-15, a bolt release, a safety, which works uh, surprisingly well. A, a magazine release located on the side. Uh, these definitely don't drop free. They kind of wedge in there, but I mean, it kind of is what it is. It's not that hard to strip them out and load a new one in. Drop the bolt release and it chambers them just fine. The grip on this guy is pretty decent. It looks like a more traditional AR style grip you can swap out, but I like this one. I'm going to leave it there. And this is a fixed stock with an adjustable cheek riser, which would be nice if you put a kind of a higher elevated optic on there. That's going to be good as well. It's got some cutie slots on the back. And then it also has this nice rubberized butt pad right here, which gives you some added texturing and a little bit of cushion. 
Now that is kind of the generalized specs and features. They come with the five round magazine, in fact, two of them in the sights, and you're gonna have your interchangeable chokes. Now, what I really wanna discuss is the kind of performance down at the range versus the handling of a big gun like this. This is a rather large firearm. With that aluminum rail, it does add some weight to the front, but it balances surprisingly well. And it's actually very ergonomic and comfortable. One of the more comfortable semi-auto 12 gauges I've shot. Now it's very nimble, it's easy to handle, and again, it's a little bit heavy, so some weaker shooters or smaller shooters may have difficulty holding the front up, especially with the heavier barrel shroud on the front. But if you're, I mean, like, if you're anything, a uh, like standard build, you're going to be fine handling this shotgun. With that being said, I want to transition from the handling and the ergonomics to the reliability. And this is where you're going to really want to stay tuned to understand the function of this shotgun. This is not the first one they sent out to the channel. The first one they sent out to the channel would not cycle most rounds. Now, we talked back and forth with G-Force Arms. We thought it might be a cycling or break-in issue. It was not that. It just wasn't functioning. I'm not quite sure the issues, but their customer service would generally take care of that, and they can diagnose it pretty quick. So this is the second one out to the channel, and right off the bat, we had none of those issues. So it was something that was a, a fault of the gun, and I don't blame uh, G-Force Arms too much for something like that. Every, every once in a while, a gun manufacturer, we just they can't all be perfect, right? But how they handle it, how their customer service is, and I hear it's pretty good. Again, I am a YouTuber. They're dealing with me like a YouTuber, but they do warranty their guns, and it shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. With that being said, that's when they sent out a ton of ammunition to the channel, and I got to try about six different types, including some from American Pawn and Gun. So I want to talk about some that didn't work. Uh, right off the bat, you're not going to be able to just grab low brass and run it through here. I'd break it in with about 10 or 15 rounds, clean it, oil it, of high brass ammunition. So it's two favorite high brass ammunition were the buck shot that I used. So we're going to talk about the Seller and Bellet double lot buck, which worked incredibly well, and the Black Aces tactical double lot buck. I shot a lot of these through it, and it ran great. It seems to really like two and three quarter inch shells, especially high brass. It functions incredibly well. They recommend shooting 300 feet per second and up when it comes to the ammunition. Now, we did run some high brass ammo that was three inch, as you can see in the intro, but we actually had feed issues coming from the magazine with some high brass ammo that was three inch in length. So that three inch ammo kind of had some hangups when it came to feeding, but it definitely cycled the action just fine. So it seems like some of the two and three quarter low brass is gonna have problems cycling. And then some of the three inch stuff is gonna have trouble feeding. So it's gonna be kind of hand picking back and forth. And as you can see in the intro, I show you the boxes of what works and what doesn't. You can go back and get all the information. But again, that Black Cloud Federal worked really well. The Black Aces Tactical Buckshot worked really well. And the Seller and Bellet Buckshot worked really well. And then what I did was I actually transitioned back to low brass birdshot. But this time, Federal, I believe it was 1250 feet per second Federal ammunition. And this is where this shotgun just really broke in, found its own, and shot incredibly well. This thing ran like a sewing machine with the low brass federal. And as it started to get its footing and break in, it really cycled that stuff well. So this is not a gun that's absolutely dependent on high brass ammo. It seems like it runs a lot of low brass ammo and a lot of low brass ammo just fine. Talking about that reliability, it was actually 100% functional after, again, about 25 rounds of a break-in period with high brass ammo with that federal ammo. Absolutely no feed issues, no function issues. I was rattling off shots as fast as I could pull the trigger, and that's where I want to transition back from reliability to handling. Shooting that lower brass ammo for clay pigeons, target shooting, just fun down at the range in competitions... This thing is a race gun. It flies through the magazine, and I would definitely recommend some larger capacity magazines. Some of those 10 rounders, you can dump through those no problem, and they seem to be really reliable again with that two and three quarter inch low brass ammo that still was a little bit harder than your average ammo. The recoil impulse was almost non-existent when you're talking about 12 gauges anyways with that low brass federal. And it was actually very controllable with this two and three quarter inch buckshot, both from Seller and Bellet and Black Aces Tactical. 
So in a personal defense situation, these are the two rounds I would recommend. Now, when we're talking about this guy right here, that Fiacci Waterfowl, it jammed up pretty good. And then that Royal Blue Steel Max Dram, that jammed up pretty good as well. And again, that's that three inch stuff. And you actually definitely felt like you were shooting three inch. You could definitely feel it on your shoulder. So in summary, guys, if you're looking at a shotgun like this, I can definitely recommend it. Under $500, good build quality, nice set of features, um, but know what you're getting into. Understand that you are going to have to handpick some ammo for your gun, and ammo is actually coming back in stock. I know American Pawn and Gun has got a wide variety. Definitely break it in with maybe a box of like this Black Aces Tactical or Cellar and Bellet Buckshot, and you should be good to go after that, especially even with some low brass ammo that's still got that higher velocity. Not the cheapest stuff you can find, but definitely not the most expensive. I think I paid about $6 a box for some of that low brass stuff, and this thing cycled like a champ. So with all that being said, I hope it gives you a lot of data points so you can help really diagnose if you want to pick up this shotgun or not. I like it. I'm a pretty big fan. Once I worked through those kinks, once I worked out those bugs and got the second shotgun out to the channel, it's pretty cool. But be aware you're not just going to be able to grab whatever ammo you want and throw it in here and just expect it to run. You are going to have to pick some ammunition. So if that's not for you, I understand. There are other shotguns out there on the market. You can pretty much put whatever in and you're good to go but I think this does offer some value for money, especially when we're talking about that aluminum rail system, the overall feel and features that you get. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.